Hello, I'm Dr. Abhishek Mangeshika and today we're discussing a condition that can significantly impact the lives of those who suffer from it, bowel endometriosis. Bowel endometriosis is a complex and often misunderstood aspect of endometriosis, where endometriosis begins to grow on or into the bowel. This condition can lead to a range of symptoms that affect daily life and understanding it is crucial for proper management and treatment. Bowel endometriosis occurs when endometriosis tissue implants itself on or within the walls of the intestines. This often involves the rectum and the sigmoid colon, though other parts of the bowel can also be affected. Unlike typical endometriosis, which stays within the pelvic cavity, bowel endometriosis can cause more widespread issues due to its location and nature of the tissue. Studies suggest that bowel endometriosis is present in about 5-12% to of women with endometriosis, although some studies indicate up to 37%, making it a significant but often overlooked aspect of the disease. Unfortunately, because its symptoms often mimic other gastrointestinal conditions like IBS, it is frequently misdiagnosed, leading to delays in proper treatment. The disease process behind bowel endometriosis is not well understood. In my opinion, there are two types of nodules described. Type 1 affects the rectum and is always adherent to the back of the uterus, causing obliteration of the pouch of Douglas. That's the space between the uterus and the rectum. So if anyone has ever seen a surgical note that says POD obliterated, it's always because of bowel endometriosis. Type 1 nodules are always associated with posterior wall adenomyosis of the uterus, and or the cervix. Type 2 nodules are trickier because they can be isolated anywhere along the intestine and may not necessarily be adherent to any other structures. The symptoms of bowel endometriosis can vary widely but often include chronic pelvic pain, pain that persists in the lower abdomen especially during or around menstruation, painful bowel movements known as dyskesia. This is pain that intensifies during bowel movements especially on or around the period. Rectal bleeding, which is blood in the stool, can be a sign of bowel involvement, although this may be a rare presentation. Bloating and abdominal cramping. Persistent bloating and cramping can be indicators, especially if they worsen in or around the period. Alternating periods of constipation and diarrhea or a feeling of incomplete bowel evacuation, known as tenesmus. Dyspareunia or pain during intercourse, especially pain that is deep and occurs during or after intercourse. These symptoms can significantly affect a person's quality of life, leading to difficulties in daily activities, work and relationships. The chronic pain and gastrointestinal issues also lead to anxiety, depression and a sense of isolation, especially when the condition is not well understood or treated. Bowel endometriosis is challenging to diagnose because its symptoms often mimic other gastrointestinal conditions such as IBS or inflammatory bowel disease. Therefore, a high index of suspicion and thorough evaluation are necessary, particularly in women who have not responded to standard treatments for these conditions. Clinical examination. The first step in diagnosis involves taking a detailed medical history and performing a pelvic examination to identify the signs of endometriosis. If one listens to the patient closely enough, they will tell you where the disease is. But if you've ever been to a busy doctor's office, there isn't enough time spent listening to the patient, which is a very important diagnostic tool that seems to have gotten lost along the way. Transvaginal ultrasound. It's a specialized ultrasound that can detect deep infiltrating endometriosis involving the bowel. It's often used to assess the extent of disease before surgery. MRI is highly effective for visualizing the extent of bowel endometriosis, helping to plan for possible surgical intervention. The MRI is more useful to look for lesions higher up in the colon, as well as lesions that spread laterally. Laparoscopy is the gold standard for diagnosing and treating bowel endometriosis. While most bowel lesions can be picked up on imaging by an experienced endometriosis surgeon or team, smaller lesions can only be seen at surgery. One should never perform a laparoscopy just to have a look anymore, but the intention should be to treat anything that one finds. So if the surgeon is not experienced in resecting a bowel lesion, they have no business doing a laparoscopy to look for endometriosis in the first place. And that's a red flag. Accurate diagnosis and effective treatment often require a multidisciplinary approach involving gynecologists, colorectal surgeons, radiologists, and pain management specialists. This ensures that all aspects of the disease are considered and the best treatment plan is developed. I will add a corollary that while MDTs are excellent, the endometriosis surgeon is the lead in the decision-making process because even the most experienced colorectal or general surgeons 
have very little understanding of bowel endometriosis and unless they've worked with an endometriosis surgeon or team before, they will probably have no idea on how to approach the disease. True story. A colleague in the same hospital as mine was doing a bowel endometriosis surgery and called my colorectal surgeon to assist him. When he told me the story later, he said that he had no idea how bad the disease actually is because he had no clue on how to actually separate the bowel from the adhesions on the back of the uterus. Because usually when they come in, to my cases, the major dissection has already been done and the bowel prepared for whatever excision or resection needs to be performed. In this case, the colleague gynecologist expected the colorectal surgeon to finish the dissection for him and the colorectal surgeon just expected to show up and do the bowel procedure and leave. He definitely didn't expect to or want to do the whole surgery. Conservative management, hormonal therapies such as oral contraceptives, GnRH agonists and progestins can be used to suppress the menstrual cycle and alleviate symptoms. However, these treatments are often not enough for deep endometriosis and are usually considered a temporary measure. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs and other pain management strategies can help manage symptoms though they do not address the underlying disease. Some patients find relief by modifying their diet such as adopting a low FODMAP diet and making lifestyle changes to reduce symptom-related flare-ups. Surgery is often required in cases of significant bowel involvement or when conservative management fails to provide any relief. The type of surgery depends on the extent of the disease. There are three types of surgery for bowel endometriosis. The first one is shaving. That is when the disease is removed from the bowel wall without opening the bowel. The problem is that this is not a very standardized technique and different surgeons perform different levels of shaving, which leads to high recurrence rates. It's very important for the surgeon to evaluate the lesion well before shaving. Many cases we operate on that had been operated elsewhere previously by shaving, which was not amenable to shaving in the first place. So this is not really a recurrence of disease, rather a persistence of disease which was underestimated at the initial surgery. Number two, disc excision. This is an interesting technique which involves a full thickness excision of the bowel wall, but it is limited to single nodules less than four centimeters in length less than one-third circumference of the bowel and those not causing subocclusion. Number three, segmental resection. This technique involves removing a segment of the rectum that may be affected by a large single nodule or multiple nodules in close proximity to each other or a large nodule causing subocclusion or narrowing of the bowel. In our practice, we do this completely laparoscopically or robotically and never via open surgery. Segmental resections for endometriosis are different from traditional colorectal surgeries as in we only remove the affected area above and below the lesion. So it is much less morbid than the resections done for colorectal cancers, which also takes away the need for a preventive stoma. While surgery can provide significant relief, it is important to manage expectations and understand that endometriosis can recur. Bowel endometriosis when treated properly can have very low recurrence rates, less than 1%. Even after treatment, bowel endometriosis requires ongoing management. Regular follow-ups with your healthcare provider are crucial to monitor for any signs of recurrence and to manage any persistent symptoms. Living with a chronic condition like bowel endometriosis can be challenging, but there are strategies to help manage the physical and emotional aspects of the disease. Stress management techniques, physical therapy, and support groups can play a vital role in maintaining a good quality of life. Bowel endometriosis can also impact fertility, even if it doesn't directly affect the ovaries or fallopian tubes. There are very good studies done that show that once colorectal lesions are removed, the fertility rates improve by up to 80% within the first year after surgery. Colorectal surgery also improves ART outcomes such as IVF or ICSI. And it is mandatory to remove all bowel endometriosis lesions before embarking upon an assisted reproductive technique. While it may seem rare, bowel endometriosis is more common than many realize, affecting a significant percentage of women with endometriosis. It's often underdiagnosed because of its overlapping symptoms with other conditions. I've seen reports from all over the world that have reported the bowel is normal, and when we actually looked at the imaging, we seen massive nodules in the bowel that were missed. The easiest way to address this myth is the same way that I do with my patients when I'm asked this question. Imagine that you have appendicitis and the doctor tells you to remove your uterus or wait until menopause. Does that sound like sound logic? The disease is in the intestine, so how will removing the uterus solve the problem? 
It's crucial to have bowel endometriosis treated by a surgeon who specializes in this area, as it requires specific expertise to achieve the best outcomes and minimize complications. Many gynecologists do not diagnose the disease, and even if they do, they will be reluctant to refer patients to specialist care and waste time by pushing unnecessary fertility treatments or prolonged hormonal therapies or finally hysterectomy. Bowel endometriosis is a complex condition that requires a nuanced and specialized approach. Understanding the symptoms, seeking a proper diagnosis, and exploring all treatment options are essential steps in managing this condition effectively. If you're experiencing symptoms that could be related to bowel endometriosis, don't hesitate to seek expert advice. The earlier you get a proper diagnosis, the sooner you can start effective treatment. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe and share. Please feel free to share your thoughts or ask questions in the comments below. By staying informed and supporting one another, we can help improve the lives of those living with this condition.